We begin with breaking news out of northern Gaza, and Israeli strikes have killed three sons and three grandchildren of Hamas's political leader. Several members of Ismail Haniyeh's family were traveling by vehicle in the Al-Shatek camp when their car was hit. We'll now speak to Yusri Lghul, who's a journalist. He's also joining us on the line from Gaza City. Yusri, uh, tell us what you know about the strike and what's happened. Yes, uh, good afternoon and uh, good evening. And uh, um, yeah, I mean, we saw a misery situation here in the Shapa refugee camp while we were walking. We heard an explosion. And uh, we didn't know what happened because it was uh, close to an UNRWA school. But when we uh, ran and, and, and escaped from the explosion, uh, some of the, uh, our uh, neighbors said that um, an Israeli drone targeted uh, a vehicle or, or a, a car. So I went back and I saw uh, the, uh, the, the car, well, and many bodies were uh, 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 many bodies killed, and someone was severely injured. And uh, after that, they said that he is Muhammad, the son of Ismail Haniya, and he uh, killed after that, and, and uh, one of his, I think, uh, his children, and two of his brother's children, a girl and a boy. And this, uh, what happened is uh, close to a uh, shop uh, market in the middle of the beach refugee camp. So, Yusri, uh, you can confirm then that Ismail Haniyeh's family, his children and grandchildren, were in that vehicle and it was targeted by the Israelis? Yeah, yes, sure. They uh, targeted them while they were visiting their families because today is the first day of the Eid. So uh, the Palestinians and Muslims are visiting each other. So uh, the children want to visit their, I think, uncles. So uh, the Israeli drone uh, targeted them while they are visiting uh, uh, the, the family. And, uh, and we knew them because uh, it's a, 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 a missile of a drone. It's not an F-16 um, um, missile. So we saw their faces, but uh, unfortunately their bodies were cut into pieces. What 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 is there to be said about the timing of this attack? As you're saying, it is the first day of Eid. It seems that because of the Ismail Fani, a uh, leader of Hamas, and about the negotiation and the refusal of Hamas of the Israeli uh, negotiation or uh, the bargain about what's happening right now about the uh, the, the the prisoners and and the kidnapped uh, Israelis. Uh, it seems that the Israeli want to send a message to Ismail Haniyeh and to the Hamas uh, uh, cabinet and, 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 and the leader office that uh, the Israeli will target the whole families of the Hamas leaders in uh, North Gaza and also in, in South Gaza. This seems right now because they are civilians and they didn't do anything. They are not militancy group. They are not related to, even to Hamas. They are just sons of a leader of Hamas. And they were just uh, going uh, by their vehicle to visit their families and their uncles. And that's what happened here. Uh, Yusri, and I wonder if you can confirm whether or not, I mean, this is, this is not the first time that the family members of Hamas's leaders have been targeted. Yeah, uh, before that, they targeted his uh, Cousins, but uh, they targeted his house because we live close to Ismail Haniyeh house, and we saw the, the destruction of his house because it was uh, destroyed uh, the whole area, not only the the, the, the building of Ismail Haniyeh house and and also the other offices which is related to his house or to the Hamas movement. But what uh, happening before they didn't target his family, but this is the first time they target his son. Before that, they targeted his um, uh, cousins and, and, and uh, other nephews, maybe. But uh, it's the first time they targeted uh, 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 Muhammad and, and Hazim and Amir. They were young, and uh, the oldest one of those uh, young men are 33 years old. Okay, thank you so much for that update, Yusri Al-Ghul. Thanks for speaking to us uh, from Gaza. Uh, let's uh, bring in our uh, correspondent, Hani Mahmoud. Hani, you're obviously joining us from Rafah. And, I mean, as we're hearing, people in Gaza are marking this first day of Eid under 
uh, the threat of Israeli airstrikes. And now this news confirmed that Ismail Haniyeh's family, uh, members of his family, have been killed. Yes, well, we, we were monitoring the situation since early hours of this morning and, of course, from uh, late hours of last night when the, we, we witnessed a surge in the airstrikes across the Gaza Strip that started in the central area of Nusayrat, including in early hours of this afternoon, once again, a Nusayrat refugee camp that's a block two that was targeted relentlessly with massive airstrikes and many people reported to Al-Aqsa Hospital. At the same time, the Israeli military... Uh, was attacking eastern part of Gaza City, including the densely populated neighborhoods, Shijaiya, Zaytun neighborhood, by constant non-stop artillery shelling since early hours of this afternoon. And what we learned so far about what happened to the sons and the grandsons of Ismail Haniya, that's the political a bureau chief of Hamas in Gaza, they were in a car and on their way to pay a visit for their relatives because today marks the first day of Eid and this is the, the traditions that Palestinians here uh, share together and, and do on the first day of Eid is to pay visits to their relatives and the close ones and family uh, members. Uh, what the description we had from an eyewitness on the ground, the car was targeted by at least two missiles fired from a drone and completely incinerated the car beyond recognition. Bodies were removed from the car and they were coming off in pieces as they were also incinerated uh, beyond recognition uh, in the car. That's a three the three sons of Ismail Haniya and three of his grandchildren, two boys and one girl of the, of the grandchildren. Now, the incident, including the constant attacks uh, starting from last night and all day long, is viewed largely by many people here across the Gaza Strip as a, a tool of pressure to dictate the course of the peace uh, of the ceasefire talks in Cairo. And it's also uh, a, a sign by the Israeli military that there is no let up in the attacks and the Israeli military will continue uh, attacking Palestinians across the Gaza Strip, including those who are associated or family members uh, of, of Hamas or any other uh, Palestinian uh, group. It's also viewed as a way uh, to inflict as much pain and as much uh, damage uh, on people who already suffer, already traumatized by this ongoing war for the past six months. Yeah, and Hani, I mean, we, uh, the Hamas leader, Ismail Haniya, has said, in fact, that the killing of my sons will not affect the Hamas ceasefire demands. That's what we're hearing right now. And he's also accused Israel of killing his sons in, quote, the spirit of revenge and murder. So that is what the political leader has had to say about the killing of his sons as well as his grandchildren. Um, but, um, Hani, speaking of uh, the, the ceasefire... Um, how, how are people in Rafah, at least where you are, um, feeling about the ceasefire talks? At the same time, though, we understand that there is a threat of a Rafah mm -hmm. ground offensive. Mm -hmm. Yes, well, to put things in context, Palestinians have been largely drained by the uh, all the le leaked reports and the ongoing uh, on and off talks of a potential ceasefire deal. And, and the fact of the matter that this has been going on for quite some time and got to the point where Palestinians are ready to receive some solid uh, news about the, about a ceasefire, not some leaked report that there is a potential uh, ceasefire. It has been very exhausting, very uh, very tiring for people who are suffering on daily basis. Still, there is a famine going on in the northern part. There are signs of starvation. People are still dying at the record pace. And it was the hope of people that the month of Ramadan was going to be somehow peaceful and they would not want to see uh, their children wrapped in white sheets and be in the hospitals with no medical attention whatsoever. The current talks right now Though they are somehow they are constructive, but it's still they haven't got to the point where where people can for sure feel there is a ceasefire coming up anytime soon, particularly uh, the all the the rejection of from the Israeli side on one of the major demands, which is the return of this place. Uh, Palestinians here in, in the in overcrowded Rafah city to their homes, the Israeli military is still 
uh, rejecting this demand. And we know uh, Hamas and other Palestinian uh, groups on the ground, they're making this as a priority because they want to see a relief of the ongoing uh, trauma and ongoing suffering and misery for the 1.5 million uh, displaced fa Palestinians in overcrowded southern part of the, of the Strip. And Hani, uh, while I have you with us, just give us an update, if you might, on the past few hours in Gaza City and whether there has been any strikes, uh, not only in Gaza City, but right across the Gaza Strip in their aftermath. Yes, well, we were able to monitor this surge in the attacks from last night when just it's the night, um, just hours before uh, Eid day started, where in the Israeli military, uh, in, in a massive airstrike, targeted a residential home in a Nusayra refugee camp, killing at least 14 people, mostly women and its children. Uh, at the same time, they're ongoing the constant shelling of, of eastern part of Khan Yunus, an area that has been repeatedly targeted and and based on what we heard from people who went back after the Israeli military pulled out from the area uh, particularly Abisan and Zanna area those are the eastern neighborhoods of Khan Yunus have been destroyed beyond recognition for a lot of people the area was unknown for them it's completely alien to what they used to know so far about the the city the eastern part of, of Gaza City also, including Shaja'i and other parts, were under heavy artillery shelling. And, and the fact that there are uh, drones, those are attack drones in the area, just c casting many fear and concern for people to go back to these, to these areas, including the attacks within the past uh, few, if, if within the past hour and earlier in this uh, early hours of this afternoon. Okay, thank you, Hani. Thank you so much. Hani Mahmoud reporting for us from Rafah in the Gaza Strip. Make sure to subscribe to our channel to get the latest news from Al Jazeera.